My name is Kayla from Mtronics Diagnostics and I'm an audiologist. With the growing world of technology and the availability of wireless devices, patients have expressed more and more concern about hearing aids and their potential to cause radiation damage. Today I'm going to discuss electromagnetic radiation and also demystify if hearing aids can cause radiation damage or not. So what is radiation? <laughs> radiation is an electromagnetic spectrum and it consists of waves that travel through space and these waves carry electromagnetic energy. So as you can see in the image, you have waves with a lower frequency and you have waves with a higher frequency. The waves with the lower frequencies, like your radio waves, carry far less energy and they are much bigger. They are almost the size of a house, to give you some perspective. When you move to a higher frequency energy, um, you are getting your X-rays and your gamma rays and these waves carry far more energy and they are also far smaller, so they are about the size of a nuclei. As soon as the wave starts to carry a higher frequency and more energy, it has the potential to cause damage to the cells within the body. So how does this damage actually happen? Well, if you look at the image, if the wave starts to fall in the red area, meaning it's got a higher frequency and it carries higher energy, it is called ionizing energy. When a wave has ionizing energy, it means that it is small enough and it's got enough energy that if it were to pass a cell within the body or the atoms that compose the cells within the body, it is capable of dislodging an electrode from um, the atom itself. And this causes the atoms of the body or the cells to become unstable and can cause damage within that cell. So this is why if you sit in the sun for too long and you've got too much exposure to ultraviolet rays, you get skin cancer. And it's the same reason as well that we do not recommend excessive exposure to x-rays. Contrastingly, if the wave falls within the blue area, it's got a lower frequency, it's got a lower energy, it doesn't have the capability of dislodging an electron from an atom. So it doesn't cause that type of damage to cells, so it's not as dangerous. The only side effect of non-ionizing energy is heat. So this is why a light is hot and this is why microwaves heat up your food. But obviously, excessive exposure to heat can also start to cause damage to cells. This is why you probably wouldn't willingly get into a life-sized microwave. So with that in mind, if we are creating medical devices, and not even medical devices, even cell phones, which are used by the entire population, we need to be very aware of how much non-ionizing energy is too much non-ionizing energy. In other words, it's emitting too much heat. So what we're going to discuss next is exactly that. How much is too much and how do scientists actually measure if the non-ionizing energy is too much? So this is where the specific absorption rate comes in. This is basically a measurement of the amount of radiation in watts that your body absorbs um, per unit kilogram of your body. Um, your hearing aids are class 2 medical devices, which means they have to comply to the FDA regulations, to the medical device directive regulations, and to your radio equipment directive regulations, all of which require the SAR rate to be below 1.6 watts per kilogram. So basically how they measure the SAR calculation is they take either a hearing aid or a cell phone and they put it on the ear or by the ear as how you would hold a, a cell phone if you were on a phone call um, for some time and then they measure the amount of heat that is emitted into that area of the head where the hearing aid or the cell phone is sitting. As you can imagine, high levels of heat do have the potential to damage cells and so the SAR value ensures that it never reaches a level where um, the heat can cause damage to a cell. So basically what the SAR value is, it's the absolute maximum 
um, radiation or heat that is emitted from that device. So um, over here we have an image of what the experiment looks like when um, scientists are measuring the SAR value with cell phones. It's held nice and close to the ear and there's technology that can identify how much heat is being emitted into that portion of the ear and the head. Let's have a quick look at what actually is it within a cell phone or within hearing aids that causes it to emit electromagnetic energy. So firstly we have voice and data which is continuously communicating to a tower as soon as there is wireless communication between two devices you are emitting electromagnetic energy non-ionizing that is um, and so that creates a bit of electromagnetic energy you then also have your wi-fi so as soon as your cell phone is connected to wi-fi it's also communicating to another device and emitting electromagnetic energy and then lastly we have bluetooth as soon as there's communication via bluetooth for example between the cell phone and the hearing aid there is um, emission of electromagnetic energy so let's have a look at a comparison between cell phones and hearing aids so this is a graph comparing the SAR rate of cell phones versus hearing aids. So basically they connected an iPhone 7 to um, Bluetooth and also um, uh, made a phone call and measured the SAR values and then also connected hearing aids um, to Bluetooth and measured the, um, the SAR values um, from there. And you can see that the cell phone emits far more electromagnetic energy or heat um, uh, than what the hearing aids do. In fact, the hearing aids, you can barely even see the bar graph. So um, the cell phones comply to the standards. In other words, the SAR value is below 1.6 and hearing aids are way below what is the recommended maximum. So in summary, are hearing aids dangerous? In other words, do they emit enough radiation um, to cause damage to the cells within your body? And the answer is absolutely no. The regulations allow for 1.6 watts per kilogram and your average hearing aid SAR value is between 0 0.001 to 0 0.02, <laughs> which is 80 to 2000 times less than what regulations allow. To give you even more perspective, you would need to wear 75 hearing aids on one ear for the SAR value to just reach the maximum allowance um, for, for radiation for it to be considered dangerous.